Hey, this is Drew Bennett from Big Damn Kid, and I have issue number nine of Transformers, and it's the introduction of Circuit Breaker. Okay, Circuit Breaker, the first human who is a real threat to the Transformers. And who is Circuit Breaker? What's she all about? We'll find out in this episode, which is titled Disintegrated Circuits. It opens on GB Blackrock, who is running around Black Blackrock Speedway, or speeding around Blackrock Speedway in a, in a sports car. He is, honestly, he, he's, he reminds me very much of Tony Stark, in that he is a billionaire, a uh, millionaire industrialist. I keep saying that because it's 1980s and millionaire meant something at that time. Uh, and so he is out and he's doing his, he's running his laps, he's doing that for about two hours. He's like, he likes to go out and race, but he's stopped by his chief of staff, his name is Ames, and Ames is there with a, a general, I think it's uh, General Capshaw, so he's there with the general, and the general learns that GB was making a uh, a weapon to stop the robots, and he wants GB to stop that because he wants the, the, the army to take care of that, but GB is not hearing any of it. He is going to go and do his own thing. He also tells him that he has some place better to be, a uh, very important meeting, and that very important meeting is to go and catch up with Josie Beller. Now, Josie Beller, as we know in uh, earlier issues, she was actually was issue number six. She was in an accident where Shockwave took over the oil rig that GB owns, and she was in an accident. She got a lot of electrical feedback. It left her partially paralyzed. She can kind of move her head, move one of her arms, but the rest of her is paralyzed, and she's been in the hospital ever since. Now, GB really shows a lot of um, concern and compassion for Josie. He doesn't. He feels completely responsible for everything that's happened to Josie because of the attack by the Decepticons, which, you know, she, she wants to be, go right back to work. She wants to help him fight the robots, but he does not want her to get hurt anymore. So he, you know, feeling completely responsible, tells her, no, I, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it next time. So, talking about the Autobots, if we go to the Autobots here, Ratchet is checking them all out to make sure that uh, they are in working condition. So, has them all out racing across the, the plains there, and they're all back up to tip-top condition. He has been hard at work, obviously. Uh, it says that they're all fine. They all can drive and transform fine, except for Jazz. Now, Jazz, Jazz is sitting there listening to Madonna, uh, a material girl. And Jazz has started to really embrace the Earth and what's happening on, on the Earth. There has been no catalyst for this specifically, but he is now starting to embrace and learn as much as he can about the people of Earth, especially the more culture, the pop culture, and how humans think. And so what he has decided is that uh, he's going to go and talk with GB Blackrock himself and explain to him that there are two factions of Transformers. There is the Autobots and the Decepticons, and in, addition, in trade for protection from the Autobots, Maybe GB can give them fuel, the fuel that they need to defeat the Decepticons. So, Prowl gives him the, the okay to go and speak with GB and sends Wheeljack along the ride with him. So, <clears throat> Jazz and Wheeljack go off in search of GB. Meanwhile, we're at the aerospace, uh, the aerospace uh, complex, the factory, that the Decepticons have taken over. We haven't seen them back in that oil rig in a while. They're back there at the aerospace because that's a, it's a manufacturing building and what they're doing is they're manufacturing or they're going to attempt to manufacture some new Decepticons. Well, ja uh, Shockwave is talking with with Starscream about this. They talk about how Megatron has disappeared and then Frenzy comes in and Frenzy throws a little temper tantrum, and because of that, in his cold and calculating way, Shockwave, six buzzsaw on him, it's a buzzsaw or a laser beak, buzzsaw, six buzzsaw on him, and has, uh, tells him that the next time he steps out of line and insolence, 
you might have his arm cut off. Yeah, there's no nonsense with Shockwave. He is not messing around. So Shockwave leaves them and goes and talks to his prisoner, his prisoner Optimus Prime. Now, his prisoner Optimus Prime is, is there in a, in a room where there are six um, brain units. Let's see, what are they? Yeah, um, brain modules for Decepticons that he says that Optimus created those with his creation matrix. Now, well, he, he, I don't know how that happened. That there is a, there seems to be a plot hole in this. Either when Optimus, before he was able to, and we'll, we'll see this in, in, we'll see this here. But Optimus transferred the creation matrix to Buster Witwicky. So that that thing where he put the nodules on his head and the wires on his head, he transferred the creation matrix to Buster Witwicky. So he doesn't have the creation matrix in him anymore. So. These brain modules, they must have been created when he had the creation matrix. I don't know. Seems like a big hole there as to what, what's going on because these brain modules, they're for Decepticons and we'll see those Decepticons in, 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 a, future, in a future issue. But they say that Optimus made them. Uh, or at least, you know, um, Shockwave is saying that. We talk, he mentions Buster Witwicky, we go to the Witwicky garage, Buster is kind of having a, a tough time of it because Dad's still in the hospital, he's been in the hospital for, let's see, he's been in the hospital since issue number four, so five issues, he's been in the hospital. He has another episode, he's trying to figure out how to fix something, he has another episode, and while he has that episode, the, the true nature of what he has inside him comes out and he is able to completely rebuild an engine with his thoughts alone. Okay, so he doesn't know that he has a creation matrix within him, but that's what he has. Now we know that, and so we now can see that he's using that. Go over to GB Blackrock. He's at his, he's at his main offices. Let's see, the corporate headquarters in Portland, downtown Portland, Blackrock Enterprises. And we see a, a series of different frames, and a mysterious, mysterious person shows up at his, in his office, right down there in that that panel, and it's Josie Beller, who prefers now to go as Circuit Breaker. Gone is the pixie-like, cute girl that was just fresh out of college as a computer programmer. Now she is, she's. She's hardened and she's tough and she's determined and she has created this this uh, this series of circuits uh, on her body that go on with this this metal tape and it's very impressive. She can now do a number of different things. She shows GB all the things that she can do, where she can program a computer with her mind. She can shoot electricity, she can fly, she can do a ton of different things, and she tells GB that she is going to help him defeat those robots once and for all. GB still feeling, either either he's feeling guilty or he's just patronizing because Josie's a woman, that he, you know, he says here, those robots have already hurt you once, I won't let them hurt you again. You know, he actually shows very genuine concern for Josie, and that I'm saying that because all my life I've thought that GB Blackrock was just an awful, awful person. And in these first few issues of Transformers, you see that he has some genuine concern for his employees who are who were captured at the aerospace, uh, for specifically for Josie Beller. You know, he he cares about them, and we'll see some some further there about uh, what more I think about uh, GB Blackrock. So we cut to the next day. She says that you know she's going to defeat them with or without his help. And we cut to the next day. We're back at the speedway, and GB is about to reveal this weapon that is going to take down the robots. But before he can do that, he's kind of walking down an alley, and there's a familiar Porsche 911 there, and it pops him into the in, inside and has a conversation with Jazz. Now Jazz is negotiating 
with GB of protection for fuel. And he's trying to convince him that, you know, the Autobots are good and the Decepticons are bad. And they leads him, leads police on a, on a chase. And he goes crashing off, off the curve on a cliff, transforms, and, you know, GB thinks he's going to kill him. But as Jazz said, you know, if I was, I'm an Autobot. You know, if he was a Decepticon, then yeah, he would have let GB just bounce off the ground there and, and kill him. But he's not going to do that. He's an Autobot. He's there to protect him. And so GB and Jazz make a deal. They go back to the Speedway where GB still reveals his weapon. He has a 40 foot, 40, what is it, 40 ton, oh, 40 foot robot mock up that he, he's going to use to, with the weapon to destroy that. And when he goes to show the people the weapon, it fizzles out. And again, the crowds are laughing at him. He, this this guy is frustrated. You know, he's had oil retaken from him. He's had his best worker uh, paralyzed, and now he's like crazy robot lady. And all these things are happening. What he finds out is that the weapon was sabotaged by none other than Josie Beller as Circuit Breaker, and she basically wants him to say that she was the secret weapon all along. And, well, at this point, Starscream and Frenzy show up, and they start to cause a little mayhem. Uh, Starscream thinks that he could take the weapon for himself and defeat Shockwave, and Frenzy is just looking for a fight. Now, Frenzy has uh, sonic powers uh, similar to sound wave where he can disrupt people and just create a you know utter panic with his sound whereas rumble can uh use his pile drivers to create tremors so there's the differences between those two so jazz goes and he transforms he goes to attack frenzy but as he goes to to attack frenzy and defend gb he gets blindsided by Circuit Breaker. Circuit Breaker makes no distinction between the robots. All robots are evil, and so she attacks Jazz and incapacitates him. And, you know, says that he must be destroyed, whereas GB is telling him, no, he's on our side. And Starscream is then, you know, destroying much of the place. Where's Wheeljack? Well, Wheeljack, he's stayed in the background long enough. He transforms, he goes to attack, he attacks. Uh, Frenzy takes care, takes him out, and then he goes to attack. Uh, he's almost going to get attacked by Starscream, but at the last moment, Circuit Breaker attacks Starscream and makes him crash to the ground. Wheeljack's like, "Hey, thanks very much. You know, thanks for thanks for the help." <clears throat> and she, no, I'm not helping you. You know, you're a wretched robot. And he, she turns on Wheeljack and attacks him, and then realizes that she needs to recharge or else she would have destroyed them all. And we get to the point where, you know, she, she, um, you know, tells GB that that's it. You know, I'm not. I, I, next time I see you, I, you know, this is I've paid my debt to you, um, and you know, if you feel you owe me. You know, she says, I've, I've paid my debt, so the next time I see you, uh, I'm not going to hold back. Meanwhile, Starscream and Frenzy escape. Josie destroys the mock-up of the robot instead of Jazz. And we get a very, very poignant uh, point by GB Blackrock. And because what Josie says is, um, whatever I felt I owed you has been repaid. But the next time we meet, I am on my own, and nothing you say will stop me. And then Jazz asks him, well, what do you mean by that? What does she mean by that, GB? And GB says this, I'm afraid it means by being incapable of understanding Josie's become, understanding, Josie's become the very thing she believes each of you robots to be, an emotionless, inhuman killer. Even though she's the only one of the combatants who emerged from the battle unscathed, She's the only one who truly lost. That's that's pretty f profound for a guy who you know is you know billionaire industrialist and who's quite out of touch. And we know the we know those now at uh, in our in our day and age. Anyway, 
This is Drew Bennett from Big Damn Kid. <laughs> you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook as Big Damn Kid. And you can also find me making videos of Transformers every day. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Let me know what you like uh, or dislike in the comments below.